Hey, trick or treat, you choose. Do you want to go to the house that gives out the little Tootsie Roll, or do you want to go out to the house that gives the big giant Snickers bar, right? As we enter the final quarter of the year, you get to decide, Tootsie Roll or giant Snickers bar. Some years I struggled as a real estate agent, but I had to take a step and re step back and realize this was my business. It was all me, my family, and the people that I wanted to help depended on me. If 2018 has not turned out to be the year that you thought it was going to be on January 1st, then I have some easy tips on how you can fix it and fix it fast. If 2018 has been your best year ever, hey, congrats. And this advice is important to you too. But first, what if this was your story for 2018? started okay, but then you lost some deals that should have happened. Some buyers put off buying until next year. Inventory was tight for other buyers. Uh, some sellers were way overpriced. That never happens. Some sellers, some of your listings were just way overpriced and they're still on the market. Not horrible, but not great, right? Hey guys, good to see you. Tommy, Mike, The other end of the spectrum has some challenges as well. The average agent at Elevate Real Estate Brokers grew their business at 15.9 times the national average. So 15 times faster than the average agent means a lot of success. And what's really cool is that most tell me they're not only having the best year ever, but they're also having more fun bringing the work-life balance back to their lives. And that's what it's all about. Work hard, play hard. But look, here's the danger. You are so far ahead of your goals and where you were last year that you almost feel like you can kind of coast through the final quarter. At the very least, just take your foot off the gas a little. Look, if you've already done more by the end of September than you did all of last year, and plenty of you have, so cool, then everything from here on out is pure profit, mega profit, because all your marketing and your staff and your rent and your income goals have all been accomplished by the end of September. So hopefully you all find yourself in the second scenario, but no matter what, I wanna close by telling you that the final quarter of 2018 is the easiest time to sell houses. This is because every other agent on the planet has either had a so-so year or a bad year, and they're basically gonna write off 2018 and start pinning their hopes on 2019. I'm telling you, I see this. They just say, ah, you know, things will be better next year. Let's just kind of get through this year. And it's a self-fulfilling prophecy. Let me tell you, there's also agents that are having a really, really great year. And 2018 was great, and they're gonna reward themselves a little bit by taking it easy, taking their foot off the gas like I talked about. For sure, little or no work between Thanksgiving and Christmas, and that's cool, right? I, I get work-life balance, I get all that. But the good news for you is buyers are still buying. That's right, that's the news flash. Buyers are still buying. Hey, Marley, Alan, Alan, I hope you're feeling better. Kathy. Man, everybody's out today. All right, awesome. Okay, so let me get back to it because then I'm almost done. So the news flash is buyers are still buying. It's actually easier for you to engage with them because other agents are not answering their phone. I can't tell you how many times I heard this. When I was selling real estate, they're just like, oh my gosh, you're like the only person who's answered the phone. So many, I picked up so many buyers because they'd called and called and called other agents. Maybe they were even working with another agent. Look, I've been working with another agent, but the guy is just not calling me back. So I guess I'm working with you right now. Those agents are missing in action. You are basically the only agent in town who's still working, right? Here's another thing, one last thing to think about. Sellers, okay? Sellers who are thinking about putting their house on the market January 2019, okay? Peak time, all the tourists are down, everything like that, traffic is backed up. You know everybody is in Florida in 2019. So if they're thinking about putting their house on the market January of 2019, when do they begin talking to an agent? When do they begin talking to an agent? 30, 60, 90 days prior, that's right. 
October, November, December, that's when they're talking to the agents. If you're answering the phone and touching base with all of your seller leads, you are going to start out 2019 with half a dozen listings. Let me tell you, I've been both of these agents. I've been way ahead of the game and I've been way behind the game, but I learned that the final quarter was the most important, Im the most important quarter and had a huge impact on how the following year was gonna go for me. But what if you buckled down in the final quarter of 2018, you just, you just did this. You hit the phones, you cranked out a bunch of deals to finish the year really strong, really on a high note. You know, you did the Nike slogan, the just do it. You not only did it, but you finished strong. You triumphed over adversity. And if you do it once, you can do it again if you need to. Hopefully you'll never need to, but you can, if you do it once, then you know you can do it again Anytime you need to, you will never be defeated. Not only that, by finishing 2019 strong, you're not only gonna have a great fourth quarter, but now you have a solid pipeline of buyers and sellers to start out 2019 and make that the best year ever. You have momentum. So just take a step back, do an honest assessment of your year. Then think about, no matter where you are, Think about what having an amazing fourth quarter of 2018 can do for you, can do for your business, and then just do it. Okay? Until next time, think big and serve big.